So let me see if I understand this correctly. This is a flagrant two foul and a suspension, while this is a flagrant one foul, no ejection and no suspension, and this is another flagrant two foul, ejection but no suspension. Make sense to all of you? Yeah, thought not. NBA flagrant fouls right now are downright broken. Before we start though, if you haven't already, make sure you drop the video a like, give us a subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of our videos. What's the most important thing to have with any rule set? Consistency. A rule or law should ideally be clearly defined and applied to each and every person the exact same. Yeah, that's not happened so far in the NBA playoffs. Last week, Draymond Green, Joel Embiid, and James Harden were all hit with flagrant fouls of varying severity four fouls that all had varying degrees of severity. And quite frankly, myself and plenty of other NBA fans are wondering why certain fouls were ejections and why others weren't. So let's start with the easy one, Draymond and his infamous stomp. Right away, looking at the footage, there's very little to defend Draymond on. Yes, Sabonis does grab him by the ankle, but look at that grip. That is weak at best. It's not like he's holding on for dear life like a linebacker trying to shoestring tackle a running back. And Draymond responds in kind by lifting his leg and very obviously stomping on Sabonis' chest. Not only does he stomp on his chest, he then proceeds to essentially jump off his chest. Draymond then proceeds to antagonize the Sacramento crowd as the refs are reviewing the play, all while Adam Silver was in attendance, real smart move right there, before eventually being assessed a flagrant two and being ejected. The next day, it was announced by the NBA that Draymond was suspended for game three, in part because of the play itself, and in part because of, quote, Green's history of unsportsmanlike acts. Now, personally, I think the officials were completely right in ejecting Draymond. To everyone who's saying he was provoked, that is correct. But simply being provoked is not a get out of jail free card to stomp on another player's chest. And look, I know Draymond said he isn't very flexible, but I have a feeling if he really wanted to, he could have planted his foot here or maybe over here. The suspension, I'm kind of fine with it either way. The league is 100% correct in saying that Draymond is a repeat offender. And guess what? When you have that rep, the league isn't exactly going to be lenient on things like this. What I think pushed the NBA over the edge, though, was Draymond's reaction to the Sacramento crowd. As much as I love it when players give it back to opposing crowds, the NBA doesn't. Even almost 20 years later, the NBA is still scarred from the malice at the palace. And in a high-intensity play, playoff game, all it takes is one drunk idiot to do something stupid, and you've got a bad situation on your hands. Also, again, doesn't help that Adam Silver was in attendance. Just pick your battles, Draymond. Don't do dumb shit when the commission's around. So the Draymond ejection, 100% warranted. And for me, flip a coin on the suspension. Now, Joel Embiid? That's a different story, and I want to preface what I'm about to say by saying I very much dislike Draymond Green. His constant screaming at officials just drives me crazy, and I mean, for how often he yells at refs, I think he gets away with a lot because people are just like, eh, that's Draymond. They're like, they're just numb to it at this point. Also, the guy always balls out against the Blazers for some reason, and it fucking sucks. So Draymond, fuck him. Not a fan. But I'm going to defend him here because it is bullshit that he caught an ejection and a suspension for what he did, and Joel Embiid only caught a flagrant one. Because, and maybe I'm in the minority here, I think what Embiid did was much worse. Again, like Draymond, Embiid was provoked. Nick Claxton finishes an alley-oop over Embiid and then proceeds to step over him. Embiid probably thinks, ain't no way I'm gonna be Tyron Lue or Anderson Verjao, and he proceeds to full-on kick Nick Claxton right in the area you don't want to be kicked. And to me, you couldn't script a clear rejection. Draymond, I think obviously meant to step on Sabonis, but at the very least, he's got plausible deniability. He could say, oh, he grabbed my ankle and I was just trying to get away and I accidentally put my foot on his chest. It's a bad argument that wouldn't hold up in court, but it's at least an argument. Embiid has quite literally no defense unless he just wants to admit that Claxton bruised his ego. He's laying on the ground, looks up at Claxton, like almost makes eye contact with the guy, kicks him, and is even talking to him as he's kicking him. Let's take a look at the official NBA rulebook real quick. So, it says a flagrant one foul is assessed when unnecessary contact is committed by a player against an opponent. Yeah, I think we've got that at minimum right now. With that in mind, it says a flagrant two foul is assessed when there is unnecessary and excessive contact committed by a player against an opponent. Now, call me crazy, but I feel like, first of all, any kick in 
basketball is unnecessary, and kicking your opponent where Embiid kicked him is definitely excessive. Yet, Bafflingly, it was called a flagrant one. And look, people might throw the Draymond history argument in as a defense for Embiid, but they're wrong for two reasons. Number one, the NBA used Draymond's history to justify the suspension, not the initial flagrant two and ejection. And two, Embiid doesn't have Draymond's history, but he's no saint either. It was pointed out on Twitter that Embiid has more flagrant fouls than Draymond, despite playing in less than half of the career games that Draymond has. Now, Draymond does have 164 technicals and 17 ejections compared to Embiid's 58 technicals and only one ejection, so the idea that Embiid causes more trouble than Draymond just isn't true. But Embiid does have his moments. So, why wasn't Embiid ejected? Two reasons. Firstly, he didn't antagonize the crowd. Secondly, and I think much more importantly, it was two minutes into the game. It's long been known that superstars in the NBA get a favorable whistle from officials, so you can be damn sure NBA officials were not going to eject the 76ers' best player in a pivotal game three of the NBA playoffs when there was still 46 minutes left to be played. So the fact that Embiid wasn't at the very least ejected for his foul is egregious to me. Fun fact though, when this happened, I was watching the game with my dad, and when Embiid didn't get ejected, I turned to him and said, I wonder what would happen if he did that with like six minutes to go in the third instead of two minutes into the first. Well, I didn't have to wonder for long because with less than a minute to go in the third quarter, James Harden was ejected for this. I, sorry, maybe I missed it. What, what did he do? Just like with Draymond, I am by no means a Harden fan, but this is genuinely up there as one of the worst ejections in NBA history. Not quite Tim Duncan laughing at Joey Crawford or Sheed staring at Ron Garrettson. Get out! but pretty damn close. Seriously, this is barely a flagrant one, much less a flagrant two. Harden is doing something that anyone who's ever driven a basketball before has done, and that's extend your offhand to try to keep the defender off you. He just happens to have his hand positioned a little too low, and he catches Royce O'Neal in the nether regions. To me, this is just a normal offensive foul, and if you want to say he hit him in the groin, fine, give him a flagrant one, and let's move on. But he gets ejected for this? This is not an ejection in the playoffs, in the regular season, in the preseason, in summer league, in EuroLeague, in the Chinese League, in college, in high school. This isn't even an ejection in CYO. And it's not like Harden's got a history that you can point to. He's only got 60 technicals and 14 flagrants in 16 seasons. A similar ejection, the Dylan Brooks one from Saturday, makes much more sense to me because he essentially just hits LeBron in the d you can make the argument he's going for the ball, but unless he can go ghost, there's literally no way for him to get the ball with where he put his hand. That, as an ejection, makes sense, although apparently he's not going to be suspended for game four despite leading the league in technical fouls, so NBA, I gotta ask, how much does your history really matter? Also, ejecting Nick Claxton for flexing on Embiid after a dunk, like, really? Are we getting that soft? The kid was playing the game of his life in the playoffs, he dunked on Embiid, and he flexed. He didn't say anything, he didn't push him, he didn't give him the bird. Like, come Come on, NBA, lighten up. Look, I know refs have a tough job, okay? In high school, I was a ref for a few months officiating fourth graders, and that was difficult. So I can't imagine how difficult it is to referee an NBA game in front of a crowd of 20,000 screaming fans with millions more watching on TV. But the blatant lack of consistency we saw from the officials last week is unacceptable. Coming off the precedent set by Draymond, I think Joel Embiid should at minimum have been ejected. And ejecting James Harden for lightly tapping Royce O'Neal below the belt? I just don't get that one. Call it a makeup call if you want, but if that's the case, that's an even worse look for the league. NBA, get all your refs in a room. Hell, call a damn town hall if you need to. And figure out what a flagrant one is and what a flagrant two is. Because I don't know what they are anymore. Plenty of other fans don't know what they are anymore. The players and coaches don't know what they are anymore. And worst of all, the refs don't seem to know what they are anymore. That's the video, guys. What do you think of all the flagrant fouls in the playoffs so far? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving it a like as it really does help us out a ton. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.